Orange High School, a beautiful place full of vast quantities of organisms, an environment filled with both infrastructure and nature working collectively to live. Life, a wonderful thing that continues under the space of time. In our small community, the school hosts many different life forms. As we look up an oak tree, we see the start of the natural world. Producers such as trees and bushes feed organisms in higher trophic levels. Scurrying around on the floor, forest floor, we find small mammals which weigh roughly two pounds, the eastern gray squirrel. These organisms move quickly to forage for nuts, seeds, buds, and flowers of trees. They are constantly moving, and like other tree squirrels, the eastern gray squirrel plays an important role in what's known as seed dispersal. During the summer months, squirrels are actively eating seeds that they have buried or what they find on the ground. As winter approaches, squirrels carry their food and bury it in several locations, but they sometimes forget exactly where. This lapse in memory helps the environment by allowing for these buried seeds and nuts to sprout and grow the following spring. They communicate with each other by making sounds and body movements, such as tail flicking. When predators such as red foxes and red-tailed hawks are nearby, Eastern gray squirrels will sound warning calls to alert other squirrels. These squirrels are found in abundance throughout North Carolina, and you can see them in almost every wooded area you look into. Birds are a common sight throughout the woods of North Carolina. On campus, you can find medium-sized blackbirds foraging in the parking lot. These crows are quite abundant, but finding a nest can be quite difficult because they are secretive in nest locations. They normally nest in medium growth to fairly dense mixed pine and hardwood forests, but they forage in nearby croplands, pastures, residential areas, and other open areas such as landfills. Here we can see an eastern bluebird sitting on a tree looking around at the forest below. As it looks for its next meal, we see its beautiful color. Bluebirds eat insects, snails, spiders, and earthworms. They supplement their diet with berries, eating the fruits of plants such as viburnums, dogwoods, and black and pin cherry in the summer and fall. Fire ants, known for their red color and painful bites they deliver. Their distinctive nesting mounds are usually found in the dirt across the Carolinas. The Solenopsis invicta is a polymorphic, meaning that work, workers appear in different shapes and sizes. Workers communicate by a series of semiochemicals and pheromones which are used for recruitment, foraging, and defense. They are omnivores and eat dead mammals, arthropods, insects, seeds, and sweet substances whenever they can find them. These small creatures pack a powerful punch and create chaos in many human environments because of their bites and invasiveness. Larger mammals live around the school as well. Groundhog fangs can be seen in multiple areas and tend to build burrows underground where there is some space to hide. A full-grown groundhog can attain a weight of 5 to 12 pounds and can be up to 2 feet long. A family of 4 was spotted near a pond as well, as a family of 3 hiding under sand. They construct their burrows in areas that are unlikely to flood and are dineural animals, meaning that they are most active during the early morning and late afternoon hours. This herbivorous creature has a few main predators, such as hawks, owls, foxes, and coyotes. Families continue to thrive throughout the protective fences and holes of the school. Deadwood is a vital habitat for many creatures around Orange High School. Decomposers break apart the fallen trees and the resources and nutrients they once contained a return to the earth, creating small pockets of flourishing and dense biodiversity. Termites are a key contributor within these ecosystems. The termites live in symbiosis with protozoans and bacteria in their guts, which allow them to break down the tough plant fibers from the dead wood. While these insects can be frustrating to find in our homes, in their natural habitats, they are a crucial species. They are critical as a prey species and support numerous predator populations. Additionally, they serve as decomposers who enrich the soil by breaking down the fallen and dead lumber within the forests. A subterranean colony like this one is composed of many in interconnected rooms and hallways.
working together to build this underground home could be between 60,000 and a million termites. All the termites within the colony work to protect the queen and raise her offspring. This type of society structure is called eusociality, and it has allowed termites to become some of the most prominent species of insects. Living alongside the termites, within the deadwood is a species on the verge of collapse. In the northern slimy salamander, scientifically known as Pothodon putanosis, is a terrestrial species of salamander that primarily lives under logs and other debris on the forest floor. In specific, damp, decaying logs like the one we discovered the salamander underneath are their favorite habitat as the small insects that they feed on, like ter the termites and ants, are plentiful in the decaying wood. Seeing the salamander in the wild was a rare opportunity, as although the Appalachian regions of North America have the highest diversity of salamanders in the world, habitat destruction has caused a massive decrease to their populations. Clear-cutting logging practices have decimated deadwood habitats for terrestrial salamanders, and the destruction of riparian buffer zones has caused severed, severe damage to aquatic salamanders as well. Mankind has pushed these creatures to the brink of collapse, and they will need our help in order to return. Deadwood habitats are continually overlooked in their importance to ecosystems. They provide shelter and nutrients to a whole host of organisms. Preserving these deadwood habitats is a critical step in protecting our salamander friends so that future generations may witness them as well. Flying gently above the forest floor and twisting between the blades of grass, there are several species of dragonfly that inhabit this area. They are some of the top predators of many of the s small flying insects supported by the deadwood habitats. And they are among the most agile flying creatures in the world. The nymphs start life in the water, and when they reach a large enough size, they sprout wings and take to the air to hunt and reproduce. These dragonflies are key to keeping down pests and insect species like mosquitoes and the common fly. As we move into the outdoor classroom, we slowly creep towards a creek. Flowing slowly, we see its beauty as it trickles down towards the road. Water is a necessity for life and the riparian buffer areas around the water features of Orange High School are some of the most biodiverse habitats on campus. A common yet unfortunate theme amongst the aquatic habitats around the campus is pollution. Oil leaks from the cars and buses in the parking lots and due to the runoff created by the impermeable surfaces of those parking lots, the oil descends into streams, ponds, and banks and the quiet aquatic habitats of Orange High School. This oil is poisonous for the organisms to ingest, and its effects are limited to the species in the stream. As prey organisms that have ingested the oil are eaten, the contaminants in their bodies are passed on to higher trophic levels. Tadpoles were another common sight darting across the deeper pools of the brooks. While they won't show any discernible differences between species until they mature in their adult frogs, bullfrogs and gopher frogs are the most common species in the area. The tadpoles we were able to observe were quite far into the maturation process, evident due to the presence of small hind limbs on many of the tadpoles and their size. They often reach lengths of over three inches. Frog breeding typically occurs in the early spring and offspring take approximately three and a half months to mature. While only a dozen or so tadpoles exist in the outdoor classroom stream now, frog breeding produces thousands of offspring, and this small stretch of stream was likely flooded with minuscule tadpoles during the peak of the mating season. On average, only one in 50 fertilized frog eggs will survive until they reach adulthood. During this process, the tadpoles will lose one of their major features, their tails. This occurs through a process of mass cellular apoptosis, but it is necessary for them to have improved mobility on the land and most certainly an impressive jump. Adult frogs can leap up to 10 to 20 times their own body length. 
While it was mostly masked by the dark colored water and the overcast sky, he caught a glimpse of an adult frog in a small pond uphill of the main campus. It darted through the fallen trees lying across this pond and slipped into the shelter of the deeper water. While this frog was safe from the prying eyes of our cameras, on a whole, frogs, as well as amphibians in general, are in a precarious place. Because they breathe partially through their skin, they are considerably more susceptible to environmental hazards, just like the oil seen in the downhill stream. This fact, combined with the decline of natural riparian buffer zones, which help provide amphibians with habitats and filter poisonous particles from the water, has caused massive damage to the entire class of amphibia. However, our lone frog friend stays defiant against this trend, safe from the dangers of the outside world within the confines of their homely home. Pollution is not the only danger to the small tadpoles of the outdoor classroom, as nearby there lurks an apex predator. The common snapping turtle, scientifically known as Chelydra serpentia, is a rare sight for such a small creek. Our film crew was especially lucky, given that this animal was out of the water, as snapping turtles are habitually more aquatic than almost all other species of freshwater turtles, evidenced by its webbed feet. These paddle-like feet are studded with powerful claws and allow the turtle to glide through the water with shocking swiftness, topping out at around 8 miles per hour, faster than any human swimmer. The turtle we encountered measured approximately 10 inches long, but this species can routinely grow up to 14 inches, and the record size is over 19. The turtle is wary of our presence and continually turns its head to face the nearest member of our camera crew. A powerful bite is the turtle's main mechanism of defense, as it has a much smaller and less protective shell than many other turtle species. It opens, us, it opens its mouth to remind us of its power. A single slicing chunk from its jaws could inflict a serious wound. A snapping turtle of this size could cut a human finger to the bone, and a larger one could go through it. As we attempt to move in closer to the turtle, it grows tired of our presence and strikes. A snapping turtle strike can reach speeds of up to 174 miles per hour. They are able to do this because of their long neck, which allows them to project their head away from their body and towards the target at great speed. Having driven us back, the turtle turns about satisfied that we will not go near it again. Turtles, trees, ants, salamanders, birds, groundhogs, squirrels, and more. These organisms are what make up Orange High School. They each play their own role in the amazing tapestry of life that surrounds our campus.